This decade is the decade of African independence. Forward then to independence, to independence now. Tomorrow, the United States of Africa. Kwame Nkrumah, the first leader of an independent country in Africa, is arguably the most polarizing figure that has ever come out of the continent. He survived five assassination attempts, he got overran by a coup, and finally was exiled. And these events were all facilitated by the CIA. According to declassified CIA documents, the plot to overthrow Kwame Nkrumah was already in the works a year before it actually occurred. So let's take a deep dive into the role the CIA played in the coup that deposed Kwame Nkrumah. Welcome to J-Wave's Corner, where we explore historical facts and debunk lies about Africa. Like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. In order to fully get the picture of why the CIA had so much interest in Kwame Nkrumah, we we'll have to go back to his college days. In 1935, Nkrumah went to school at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, where he got a bachelor's in theology as well as a master's degree in anthropology. He was very active in the Black Liberation Movement. In fact, he was the leader of the African Students Association of America and Canada. In 1945, 10 years later, he also attended the London School of Economics. Now here, he studied communist theory. He even managed to secure a communist card, which was a taboo at that time in the United States of America because of the Red Scare, the fear of communism, taken over the world. We have to remember that post-World War II, there was a race for what political method would win the whole world. And it was democracy versus socialist communism. After all his studying, Nkrumah came back to Ghana. And in 1957, he was able to gain independence for his people and become the first prime minister of an African nation free from colonization. Nkrumah immediately stated his goal to make Africa united in fact, we have done the battle and we again rededicate ourselves not only in the struggle to emancipate other territories in Africa. Our independence is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. He made references to the USA, meaning the United States of Africa, because he knew that was the only way the continent of Africa could stand up to the colonialists. The United States, Canada, and the UK didn't take too well to this. In fact, the Canadian government trained his plans for Africa, and as the Canadians withdrew, the Americans got closer. His detractors dismissed his claims as delusional and an excuse for him mismanaging his country. In 1979, an ex-CIA operative known as John Stockwell wrote in his book, In Search of Enemies, a CIA story. The inside story came to me from an egotistical friend who had been chief of the CIA station in Accra at the time. The allegations he put forth in the book were still denied by the State Department. But after extensive research by the New York Times and other organizations, this man, Howard T. Baines is identified as the primary individual who was behind the coup plotting to overthrow Kwame Nkrumah. How it worked, the Accra station was encouraged by headquarters to maintain contact with dissidents of the Ghanaian army and this was for the purpose of gathering intelligence on their activity. It was given a generous budget and maintained intimate contact with plotters as the coup was hatched. In fact, the CIA was so involved that it was able to coordinate the recovery of some classified Soviet military equipment by the United States as the coup took place. Baines along with other CIA operatives even attempted to make a plan where they would storm the Chinese embassy, kill everyone inside, steal their secret records, and blow up the building to cover the facts. But this never happened, thankfully. March 11, 1965, William P. Mahoney, the United States ambassador to Ghana, participated in a candid discussion in Washington DC with the CIA director. John A. McCone and the deputy chief of the CIA's Africa division. According to the document, the topic for that meeting was coup d'etat plot Ghana. Mahoney expressed his satisfaction that popular opinion was running strongly against Nkrumah and the economy of the country was in a precarious state. He was not convinced that the coup d'etat would necessarily take place, but he was 100% confident that Kwame Nkrumah would not be the leader within a year. 
The CIA was so involved in this coup plot that Mahoney even knew the next time all the coup plotters were going to meet, which was in March sometime. McComb proceeded to ask Mahoney who he thought would be the next president. And Mahoney correctly said that he believed Ghana would become a military state after the coup. At the conclusion of that meeting, it was agreed upon that all aid from Western countries will be cut off from Kwame Nkrumah. Three weeks later, Mahoney had a meeting with Nkrumah. And in this meeting, he deceived Nkrumah to make him think that the UK and the US still supported him and would give him aid. In fact, in describing that meeting, Mahoney said, quote, at one point, Nkrumah, who had been holding face in his hands, looked up and I saw he was crying. With difficulty, he said, I could not understand the ordeal that he had been through during the last month, recalling that there had been seven attempts on his life. Mahoney continued saying, while Nkrumah apparently continues to have personal affection for me, he seems as convinced as ever that the US is out to get him. From what he said about assassination attempts in March, it appears he still suspects the US involvement. End quote. In concluding their meeting, Mahoney's impressions were, Nkrumah gave me the impression of being a badly frightened man. His emotional resources seem to be running out. As pressures increase, we may expect more hysterical outbursts, many directed against the United States. May 27, 1965, Robert W. Coma, a National Security Council staffer, wrote in his briefing to the President of the United States, President Johnson, quote, we may have a pro-Western coup in Ghana soon. Certain key military and police figures have been planning one for some time, and Ghana's deteriorating economy conditions may provide the spark. The plotters are keeping us briefed, he noted, and the State Department thinks we're more on the inside than the British. While we're not directly involved, we and other Western countries have been playing to set up the situation by ignoring Nkrumah's pleas for economic aid. All in all, it looks good." End quote. Coma was using the doctrine of plausible deniability to hide the United States' role on the center stage in the coup plot. On the 24th of February, 1966, while Nkrumah was on a trip to northern Vietnam and China, the coup took place and he was deposed as the Prime Minister of Ghana. Following the coup, on the 12th of March, 1966, Coma wrote a congratulatory note to the President of the United States. And in this note, he said, quote, The coup in Ghana is another example of a fortuitous windfall. Nkrumah was doing more to undermine our interests than any other black African. In reaction to his strongly pro-communist this leaning, the new military regime is almost pathetically pro-Western. Nkrumah lived out the rest of his life in Guinea, where he never gave up on the unification of Africa and Pan-Africanism. The biggest question now is, what if Nkrumah wasn't overthrown? What if he was actually given a chance to make a United States of Africa? We would never know, because a great one was taken from us. This story serves as a lesson for all of us to understand that in order to have freedom, we have to come together as one. It's your boy J-Wave. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm out.